Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one part of a series of videos introducing biology, the study of life. This video will provide an overview of experimental design or how to properly approach setting up an experiment using examples wherever possible. The picture above outlines the scientific method, a means for studying the natural world. Experimental design is part of the scientific method. Its purpose is to help formulate a hypothesis and properly design a controlled experiment. Two important steps found in the middle of the chart. Without utilizing experimental design properly, it would be impossible to collect legitimate data or to draw accurate conclusions that can be used to gain knowledge about the world. There are seven important components to setting up a scientific experiment that will be described on the next few slides. This slide covers the first two components, the independent and dependent variables. In a given experiment, there should be one single thing that is modified by the scientist, and one particular thing that's being measured. The intentionally changed factor is called the independent variable, or IV. By changing just one factor in an experiment, the experimenter can get an idea of exactly what happens in response to that change. If more than one thing is modified at a time, there is no guaranteeing what is responsible for a particular change. The dependent variable is sometimes referred to as the measured variable. The dependent variable, or DV, is what changes in response to the IV, or independent variable, being changed. The graphic to the right provides an example of an independent and dependent variable. A scientist might want to change the liquid food that a plant gets and measure how that affects the height of a plant. The independent variable, that which is intentionally changed, is the type of liquid used. The dependent variable, what is being measured, is the height of the plant after a set amount of time. If you were to conduct an experiment to test the effectiveness of a painkiller, you would want to compare it to something. You may be testing the effectiveness of painkillers against one another, Advil versus Tylenol, or compared to no painkiller at all. With pharmaceutical trials, a placebo, or a substance such as sugar that has no therapeutic effect, might be used for a comparison. All of these specific circumstances involve one independent variable. The specific types or values of the independent variable are the control and experimental groups. The control group is the point of comparison for the other groups. No painkiller or a placebo would make most sense in this experiment. The experimental groups would be Tylenol and Advil, those different substances that are being tested against the control group. The graphic to the right shows the effect of different drugs, either calcium pills or a placebo, a sugar pill, on the percent of patients suffering a myocardial infarction or a heart attack over a period of months. In this experiment, the placebo would act as a control group. The title for a scientific experiment should include both the independent and dependent variables. Someone looking at an experiment or graph's title should have a really good idea of what was being tested without reading any further. In the graphic to the right, a title such as acids, bases, bacteria, oh my, might sound really witty or cute, but it doesn't really clearly describe what's being tested in the experiment. The effect of pH on the activity of the enzyme being produced by uh, indicates the independent variable, the dependent variable, and leaves very little to question. A scientific hypothesis should not be, as you've probably defined it throughout your science education, as merely an educated guess. When universities conduct research costing tens of thousands of dollars that require federal grants for funding, uh, they are expected to have a really good idea of what should happen in a given circumstance and why. One of the requirements is that a hypothesis must be falsifiable, or it must be uh, able to be shown incorrect. While hypotheses can be rejected, they are never proven. They're just supported by data. Hypotheses are often written in a format that is if-then. So if you study more than an hour for a test, then your scores on that test will increase, uh, would be an example of a hypothesis. The picture to the right shows the steps involved in the scientific method. As the image illustrates, forming, testing, and revising a hypothesis is a cornerstone for the scientific method. In a given experiment, there should be one independent variable, as we mentioned earlier. As many other variables as possible should remain constant or the same. If more than one factor is varied in an experiment, whether intentionally or unintentionally, the cause of some change might be left to question. In the graphic to the right, an experimenter is manipulating two different variables, the pH, or the acidity or basidity of a substance, and the temperature of a solution, and looking at how fast an enzyme works. 
As the graphs illustrate, both of those variables play a large role in how quickly the enzyme works. If both of those two variables were modified at the same time, the results may not accurately depict the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. So maintaining lots of constants is important. That is the end of this video summarizing experimental design and some of its most important vocabulary. If you're interested in learning about any other specific biology concepts, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.